Hello and welcome back. Last time we built this Tamiya CCO2 and this time we're going to apply ourselves to the question of the body. The first thing I did was to wash it with hot water and detergent and now leave it out in the sun to dry. After cutting out the body and making all the various different size holes in different places according to the schematic, the next thing to do is to cut out the lower body parts. Now this is a bit more counterintuitive so what I do is have a good look at the diagram and then I actually mark it out onto the plastic. It's very useful to avoid making mistakes like this. The first thing I always do is mask off the lights and windows and now as you can see I've begun adding the masking tape everywhere except the front mud guards, front bumper and back bumper. There, that did take quite a while. To speed things up a little, I use sheets of paper for the big flat expanses of the rear half. Three coats of satin black from the inside. Time to peel all this masking off and apply the base colour. This colour is called ochre. And this time, before removing the window masks, I remembered to give it a coat of black inside. I have cut round the headlights, the backlights and all the windows and now I'm peeling off the protective film while leaving the headlights, backlights and windows in place. So I don't really want to do this on camera but just to show you what I do, I stick my finger there to hold the leading edge down and then I ease the film off. See I'm through? I ease the film off, leaving the window masks in place. Why have I done this? Well, because this is too smart and shiny for my taste. It looks like a freshly restored Unimog. And I want a rusty one, which means I've got to paint it from the outside. Here are the two lower body sides and the body itself masked off and salted, ready to paint everything that's going to be black. Here they are once they've been sprayed matte black. I'll wash the salt off and we'll see what we've got. And I've done the same thing to the body. I've now painted the body from the outside and added a coat of matte lacquer. Let's get the salt off it. Here's our painted body, with the masking removed from inside the windows and the lights. It's very lightly rusted by my standards. It didn't come out quite as matte as I had hoped, but I know from experience that adding more of that matte lacquer doesn't make it more matte, it makes it glossier. As I've splashed out on a Tamiya Bruiser driver figure, I've painted the interior of the cab white to make it brighter in there so we'll be able to see him more clearly. I'm quite pleased with this overall. And I'm also quite happy with the way the lower body sides have come out. As you can see I've touched in the fuel filler cap with a little bit of silver. And once those pieces are painted the instructions tell us to move on to applying the stickers. But before I do that I'd like to quickly show you this. It's the driver figure from a Tamiya Bruiser. And I chose it because it comes with two heads, one with a helmet and one without. I'll be using the one without. And this driver is going to need a place to sit. So I've started making this very simple, basic interior for him. The seats are cut from steel and the rest is styrene. This is a broken glasses case one end of it is about to become the top of an engine cover. Here's the driver figure. I had to create his skin tone by mixing paint colours that I had. So it's not that realistic. But it'll do. He needs a coat of matte lacquer to tone down the gloss on his clothes a little. To mount my simple interior I've used two pieces of angle aluminium which I've bolted 
to the brackets for the body posts and shock absorbers with three millimeter bolts. So that's our interior. Sadly, my engine cover idea doesn't work because where I would have to position the engine cover, it would block access to one of the nuts that holds this thing in place and I need to be able to take it out again, obviously. Good, he's in there, but now he does need a steering wheel. By securing it with double-sided tape, I've been able to include my engine cover after all. I can just pull it off to undo the nut whenever I need to take out the interior. So I gave him a steering wheel. While I was at it, I gave him a dash as well. And a couple of gear levers to play with. And now with the distraction of making and fitting an interior out of the way, I'll go back to following the instruction manual and get on with sticking all these stickers on. I've used black acrylic paint to fill in the grill and then wipe off all the high spots. While that's drying, I'll finish applying all the stickers. In the end, I didn't actually use many of the stickers. I don't think they were created by the same graphic artist who was responsible for the ones used on the M05 that I built recently. The door handles, for example, look to me like the work of a talented nine-year-old. The black rubbers around the windows are very wide. I don't think the original rubbers would have been quite this thick. I did use the vents and turn signals, as well as the license plates and the lights. And I added the Merck and Unimog logos. Next are the light buckets and the LEDs themselves. The way the headlight buckets are attached is quite neat. A screw goes through the Lexan body and into the grill. At the rear, they're held on with double-sided tape. And double-sided tape plays a role in conjunction with screws in holding on these side pieces. Well, this Tamiya CCO2 Unimog 406 is finished. Let's have a look at it from the side. Though the tyres might not be the most effective in the world, I really do love the look of those wheels and tyres. In fact, from any angle, I think this is an absolutely beautiful model. Let's see how it looks out on the trail.
ediyoruz. 